Of course, no matter the etiology, all wounds are at risk of developing an infection. In fact, patients may even present with an infection upon their first visit. Therefore, we must be sure we can quickly identify that an infection is present and how to treat it. Wound infections can lead to severe complications like amputations and even death. Initiating a management plan and identifying the organisms responsible will reduce morbidity and mortality. Let's go over key indications of infection. These could include a strong odor, a decrease in the quality of tissue to slough or eschar, granulation tissue that bleeds very easily, or an increase in the size of the wound. Changes to the periwound, such as redness or hyperpigmentation, may occur. The drainage may also increase in amount, become thicker, or change color to dark yellow or green. The patient may complain of increased pain and warmth in the area. A wound culture should be taken to identify organisms and select the appropriate antimicrobial. A wound swab is the most commonly used method. Here, the wound is cleansed with a solution that will not kill the bacteria before taking the culture to reduce the number of surface organisms in the sample. The swab should then be placed in the deepest portion of the wound and placed in its sterile container for transport to the lab. Not taking these steps will decrease the accuracy of the sample due to the colonization of the wound. Additionally, infected fluid from the wound can be sent to the lab using a technique called needle aspiration. Tissue cultures obtained by sharp debridement or biopsy are usually more accurate as they are from deeper areas of the wound. This gives better identification of the organisms causing the infection versus surface organisms alone. However, there are some caveats to this method. To start, it requires special training and can therefore only be done by a qualified clinician. Additionally, it can be quite painful or may not be possible depending on the patient's location and equipment availability. Since it usually takes several days for a result, no matter which method is used to get the culture, treatment should be started empirically. Patients may be given either topical antibiotics applied to the wound bed or oral antibiotics if there are signs that the patient is being affected systemically. Dressings with antimicrobial properties can also be used on the wound to improve the infection. There should be a high index of suspicion for infection before starting antibiotics to prevent the development of multidrug resistant organisms. Blood work to identify the presence of systemic infection should also be taken. You should order a complete blood count with differential, as well as inflammatory markers such as C reactive protein, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, and procalcitonin. New technology is also available that shows the infected areas of the wound when a photo is taken with the device. This device uses specialized light imaging technology to identify the presence of microorganisms. Patients with severe infections may need to be hospitalized for intravenous antibiotics and the surgical removal of infected tissue from the wound bed. So I hope you liked this video absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.